Hi, Stone. Hi there. Hi, I'm Lindsay from 93X, uh, Minnesota's Hi, rock station. I love it. Lindsay, are you the DJ? Uh, yeah, I do middays. Oh, awesome. um, I've been doing middays. It's my only gig. I've been doing that for uh, over 15 years now. But Great. this is Good job. probably the biggest interview of my life. So, all right. Well, so I'm <laughs> sorry that I'm the biggest interview of your life, but you go like, yeah, you know, you could just keep getting yeah. higher on the. No pressure. I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to ride okay. this out uh, as long as I can until terrestrial radio implodes. But um, I guess we'll start here and we can hit record and we can talk um, a bit about what's going Great. on in your world. It's very exciting yeah, stuff. Good. I hope I can answer the questions. <laughs> All right, Stone, you're, you're Stone Gossard of uh, Pearl Jam, Temple of the Dog, Mother Love Bone, Brad, and Painted Shield, just to name a few. I'm sure I'm missing a few out, like a few bands there. I've I've had a few I've had a few bands. That was that's one thing I, I I've excelled at is is uh, getting groups together and saying we should have a band name and then um, getting the band name organized too. Uh, do so you, yeah. Do you have like a running list on your phone of the most ridiculous band names? Like uh, my friends and I, that's what we do. We just put together stuff yeah. like uh, you know, I have a uh, Lindsay Zygote as one band. I mean, you you never know when you're gonna need it. One of the names of bands uh, for Pearl Jam uh, on the list was Gaseous Clay instead of Cassius Clay. So that was, I don't know. Amazing. And, and Mookie Muhammad Blaylock, Ali reference. Right? Yeah. And Mookie Blaylock for a short time. Yeah, right? that was totally. And we loved the name. We, we would have kept it. Had Mookie given us the thumbs up, we would have said yes. <laughs> but he he sort of wasn't into it. So we decided yeah. to change it. Well, you know, jokes on him all these years later, but uh, you've been in so many creative projects over the years. And I want to know if you still get a certain high um, from the music you create and the, and the people you connect with. Uh, absolutely. It's it's through, you know, working with Regan at Loose Groove, Regan, who's my partner at Loose Groove, we worked together for uh, about 30 years now. So in Brad, he's the drummer and, and was a really influential and uh, amazing person in terms of turning me on to music when I was, you know, 18 years old, um, really expanded my range. But I, I love, I love getting together with friends and having a project and, and creating a little world that's, that's just your own and, um, and doing labels and encouraging bands. It's great because, you know, you, you meet these people and you fall in love with their music and then you encourage them to, you know, have this business and you talk to them about, you know, your experience in making records and, um, and, and your experience touring and all the things that you can sort of give some insights to, and then encourage them to kind of make their own decisions. And it's fun. It's just fun to encourage and be part of something that is creating, you know, art, beautiful art. So, uh, I love being in bands. I like, um, I like running a label. Um, and, but I, it's all about other people, you know, it's all about bands that are talented and friends that, love to support those bands i'm really surprised you're still a people person after years and years and years of of, of wearing a mask i mean um no. in radio certainly i feel like yeah. I, I have to be on um, right. i'm meeting all kinds of different people i assume yeah. you do too so i think that's interesting that you still carry your love of people i know you've mentioned before that um um Eddie is a big band guy and that he uh, it's about the, the group of people that he's with and uh, the music you create with that, those people. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for all the things that I'm doing out, I'm, I'm very insular at home. You know, I've got, I've got four, four girls all under the age of 15 and I'm a stay at home dad for 90% <laughs> of the year and, you know, driving to driving to school and, you know, doing, doing really simple, small things. I'm not out um, at, at, at a lot of shows. I'm not going to a lot of clubs. I hear demos and, and get excited about bands and go and see them. But um, for everything that I'm doing that you see, you know, there, there's lots that I'm not doing. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cancer. I tend to stay home and um, want to, you know, be safe with my claws. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that because I'm very okay. interested in how, um, you know, uh, the Loose Groove reboot came about because yeah. that has a little bit something to do with the uh, time here at quarantine. Um, you know, now yeah. we're in the year 2022, but Loose Groove started after success. Was there sort of like um, survivor's guilt 
when you launched it as Loose Groove as a way to elevate the bands you cared about uh, back in 94, 96? <clears throat> You know, I think it was as much of a just an opportunity. I mean, I think there was some of that in the sense that I wanted to encourage bands to do to to know that anything's possible and that, you know, the only thing we had going for us was just, again, our our kind of belief in each other and the process of being in a band and the process of like rock and rolls for everyone and that you can you can find people to play with right in your own backyard and that and that, um, and that the, really the collaboration is where the magic comes from. And we've seen it over and over again in terms of why certain artists or certain groups all of a sudden, you know, are able to touch us in a certain way. And it's not always just about one individual person. It's really the, it's people recognizing, um, the, you know, the stars of the band and really supporting them, but also being um, connected with them in a way that really uh, generates that sort of group energy. And, um so starting loose groove was was some of that some of wanting to pat you know encourage others to kind of go wow you know rock is you can do anything you know it's like it, it, the the door is open and you got to work for longer than you ever think you have to work before success comes but it it can come and um and so we did that for um you know we did that for seven or eight years and i think at some point i burned out and and i had to stop but the sort of apex was that was signing Queens of the Stone Age was I was like, OK, yes, we know how to sign bands. We can we can identify, you know, you know, really, you know, I mean, I remember hearing those, you know, demos, Josh's demos and and um, and just being like, wow, if we have anything to do with this, this is exactly where I want to spend, you know. And uh, and we were able to get that band launched, and then you know they went to Universal, and and um, and that was it. We were like, okay, we did it. We we achieved something great. Um, but I think you know during COVID, um, working with Painted Shield, reconnecting with Regan in a way that we kept talking about wanting to do more stuff. Um, there's a Brad record that we really are uh, excited about that that's going to come out eventually, and we were just like, well, how do we do all this stuff and. Michael Goldstone, who's our A&R guy that signed Mother Love Bone and Rage Against the Machine and Pearl Jam and all these bands, um, he uh, connected us with Billie Jean at, at The Orchard, and um, he said, you guys should do a label to The Orchard, and Billie Jean has been our CEO since then, and is just incredible, and um, she understands how to actually operate a label, and Regan and I are the guys that have a lot of ideas that need to be put back in the corner at some point and like see that's 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 good a idea but we're gonna, gonna ask you right i was very interested in hearing from the suits side oh, yeah. of stone concert i'm like yeah. okay i, I want to know because you've been an artist and, and now you you know um have rebooted yeah um loose groove in this way um does it does it does it does it because you're an artist do you approach management in a different way being on both sides of the coin uh, yeah, I mean, I think we have a, a long, I have a long history and perspective of understanding that collaborative art and bands is not is filled with conflict. There's nothing that's going to change that. It's going to be every single, you know, um, uh, you know, it's going to be around and it's going to be persistent and your and your manager needs to be able to understand that and manage that. And the band has to understand that there's going to be all kinds of ups and downs and all kinds of moments where it looks bleak, but that it's the um, it's the sort of not breaking up, you know, uh, is is the key. Which, <laughs> funnily enough, is the advice that um, the Edge gave us. I think back in the day um, when we first played with you too, it was like, well, what's the key to success? And it was like, don't break up. So we were like, okay, well, let's let's work, let's do that. So <laughs> I'm sure you made a mental note of that. You're like, yes, the oh, Edge, wait, I simple. got you. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, you, you left Loose Groove, that all went away in 2000, which was a very different time in music. I mean, uh, those are the LimeWire days, right? Like the Napster days. Yeah. Um, do you still have your old email address? Like what, how are you managing differently than you did in 2000 in the year 2022? Well, we have Billie Jean Cerullo, who's, uh, you know, she understands how a record label works, how the orchard operates. So we have an expert who is our CEO and um, we're good at um, being experienced musicians who've gone through a lot and they can talk to young bands and say, okay, you know, 
you know, if you're if you're in a position or we're in a position to sign you, let's do it. And here's the most practical things that we can do together. It's like it's it's our money. It's your money and our money. And like, how do we how do we think about a five year plan that gets us to where it's your money? You know, you're making um, a living. You have a career. And and so we have, you know, that and and we're, we just love art. You know, we love um album art we love um you know thinking about marketing campaigns or how ba bands can sort of present themselves in a way that catches people's eye um you know listening to mixes um uh, all that stuff is fun you know it's all it's like playing in the sandbox so for me it just feels like an extension of my childhood in a way and i'm just a lucky mf that i get to you know dink around and listen to music and go out and play it and 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 get paid to do that so well you could have picked up like backyard birding or sourdough making yeah. bread making in 2020 but you're like yeah. this is the right time was it the like was it the culmination of um the demos you come through with brad and like the music you were writing with um, painted shield is that is that like it was a, the right time to do this in 2020 with all this yeah, time? I, I think so. And as soon as we did, and as soon as we kind of felt the enthusiasm for Billy Jean, um, then we started to see okay, well, we have an opportunity here because Billy Jean is also plugged into a lot of of conversations when bands are sort of at that stage where they're getting some attention, but they they haven't sold any records yet, and they're looking for the you know the sort of the right route. And we want to be one of those labels that is the route for a band that is, you know, ready to make some decisions, don't want to spend a bunch of money, want to do things frugally and do it in a way that is going to create that long-term, you know, trajectory for them. And not everyone's going to get major, a bunch of major label money. And uh, we want to be a label that's kind of got our finger on the pulse a little bit to where if there's bands that we love, we want to, you know, we want to help facilitate for those bands and, and try to create a partnership on. So. You said you're kind of a hermit that you stay, you know, you're, you're busy being a dad, a stay at home dad. Yeah. How do you do music discovery for loose groove? What do you look for in a loose groove band? It's all been kind of random. Um, so far we, we signed a band called James and the cold gun out of, um, out of Wales and uh, incredible young rock band. That's, you know, kind of bubbling over uh, bubbling under down in, in, in UK or whatever. And um, I had just heard a song on, on KXP. I was just driving around. And I heard this song KSP and I was like, wow, that's tough. That, you know, KXP doesn't usually rock quite that hard. And, um, and Billy Jean just reached out to him on a instant message and, and said, Hey, we're, you know, we like that song a lot. Do you guys have more material? What are you doing? And they had a, a deal with their, they had our own little label imprint someplace and, and we, and we signed them and they're making a record right now. And we're doing a, we're doing a small deal with them, but so there was that, and and um, Billy Jean uh, found Tiger Cub. So um, that was a band that uh, somebody had mentioned to her that they were loving, and you know, gave gave her some um, some links to some of their music. And again, we just reached out and said, you know, we're interested. We think you guys are great. You know, what can we do? Maybe we can help you in America. Let's let's do a a co label deal or or something. And again, most of our deals are really splitting you know splitting things with these bands i mean i think that's the way of the of the future is bands are getting a lot they're getting a lot bigger percentage now than they used to which is great we want to be that partner for them you know if they if right. they make something we do it together then i mean i i was like what's the incentive for um a record label to exist in in a time when there are it's just singles right like yeah. the the rock world is dominated by singles yeah. but you, we're dinosaurs we don't know it. it might be a terrible business model <laughs> We haven't we haven't figured it out yet, but I always think things work cyclically and I think bands are going to come back and I think bands are what are going to, you know, they tend to stand the test of time. And I think it's due to, um, you know, not just one person making a decision, but a group sort of making decisions together that can add to that, you know, um, longer vision or it just makes people more loyal to those bands. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I do think that that stuff comes back around. So. We love bands, we love rock, but we love hip hop and R and B too. So we're, we we want to do it all, you know. Ultimately, but um, we're gonna we're gonna start with what we got. So when you launched back in 2020, I'm talking before Tiger Cub, which we will get into because we play Tiger Cub on the station, and love they're it. just amazing, just a great rock trio from uh, across the pond. So, um, but when you when you launched it back in 2020 or relaunched it, thanks to Billy Jean's help, thanks Billy. 
she yeah. might be on this call too. Um, you were digging through old stuff, right? Like you were coming up on Brad demos yeah, yeah. that have just been kind of sitting at storage yeah. and um, Duff McKagan's uh Yeah, the living, the living, which is absolutely perfect for us because Duff McKagan was just instrumental in Seattle scene in terms of when I was first starting to go to clubs, Duff McKagan was in 10 Minute Warning. He was in the farts. He was in these all these bands that were like, you know, really influential punk bands in Seattle that were like people were going to see, you know, it, they were making an impact. And so I got to see him in those bands and then 10 Minute Warning and then moved to Los Angeles and start Guns N' Roses. And you can hear his influence in Guns N' Roses enormous in terms of the the punk side of that band and the tough some of the toughness is really his his thing um and then to hear this record that he made even before we started to see him that had never come out before and no one had ever heard it it was just sitting in a and it it's a freaking great punk rock record and it's all duff's lyrics and all of his um songs and it was so fun to be able to sing the praises of duff because he was so influential and the fact that he made this record long before I was even going to clubs and it, and it just sat on a shelf someplace and, um, and that it was so good. And it, it would, it would have been the biggest record in Seattle had it ever come out, you know, around that time it would have been, but for whatever reason it, it, it didn't. So they kind of broke up and it was ugly and, you know, classic you know, rock explosion, but uh, the living was really, that was a fun project to do. So proud of that. That's so cool that you can get your hands on it again. And with the Brad dem demos as well, like I know um, you don't want to polish them up too much, but having access to them, the technology to work with it, oh, yeah. it's it's got to be super, I, I don't even know what goes into that. Like yeah. everything on tape, I'm guessing. So you're trying to put that in a digital world and then reworking it and still remain authentic to it. Well, yeah. And, and uh, the Brad, all the Brad stuff was recorded digitally. So we we had the files. It was just a matter of, you know, we knew that we had some songs and and we weren't quite sure whether it was a record or not. And we started listening and then we started discovering some more songs that we didn't realize were there. And then we, we really did feel like we had a record and, and, um, and we, <coughs> we did some, some arrangement stuff and we added some instrumentation, but basically they're, they're the same. And it's, it, Brad is raw. It's a, it's, it's, it's unpolished, but um, Sean's voice on it is amazing. And his sentiment and his lyrics and all of it is, is beautiful. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a, I think for Brad fans, it's, it's going to be a nice record and, um, and, and loose groove, I hope is going to be doing some vinyl, some Brad vinyl uh, over the course of the next couple of years. So we'll have all the original Brad records in a giant. Uh... I think it's interesting how Loose Groove is like linking the past with your future. Um, I want to talk about Tiger Cub. Obviously, we played, well, we started playing Stop Beating on My Heart Like a Bass Drum earlier this year. I think no. once um, you got, Loose Groove wrote them in. And um, I at, at first listen, I was like, it, what is yeah. that? Is that are those real drums? Yeah. You know, um, it was very exciting. And now we have our hands on their new single, The Perfume of DK. I've been listening to it obsessively. Um, what are you most excited about with this band? I mean, you know, Jamie's an unbelievable character. He's, um, you know, he's a really, really, he writes really wicked riffs, first of all. And he can sing and play wicked riffs at the same time, which is just a miracle to me. I'm just like, how does he do that? It's like, <laughs> seriously disconnect he's a, 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 an amazing artist um he writes beautiful ballads he plays freaking heavy ass rock um it's a trio jamie's seven feet tall so he's like an amazing personality because his whole life has been uh connected and and uh filtered through this filter of being the tallest guy in the room but he's not a basketball player you know and yeah. uh, he's an amazing sense of humor um, he's got a radio show on Sirius XM, which is just amazing. And he really, he loves music. He loves um, so many different bands. Um, he's just a, he's just a, an, a, an incredible artist. And um, the more we hear and the more he keeps writing, the more we're like, wow, we're so lucky to be, you know, connected with him. But um, I think really that the big, the big thing is they're a heavy ass rock band and um, we love that kind of music and it's groove related, you know, it's, it's not, um, 
it's not cookie monster, you know, um, heavy, but it's, it's heavy in a, in a classic, in a classic rock way. So we're, we're, um, we're excited about them. And uh, I just think he's going to write songs for a long time. And good. It's a great package. Um, They just played Skyway Theater a couple of weeks back here in Minneapolis. Right. I think Uh, that was their very first show playing all a bunch of new material too. So hopefully they'll pull it off. Yeah. I think I missed that one because I'm a newborn mom. So I've got yeah. a baby and I have oh, yeah, yeah. Shows which shows I go to, but yeah, that's I'm, really, right. I'm really excited for the future of that yeah. band. And um, while we're talking about um, uh, these things, I wanted to bring up, lastly, I wanted to bring up um, Ohana Festival and you took oh, yeah. your little small band out on the road. And I wanted to know if it felt, if you felt like a kid again, you're not Stone Gossard to Pearl Jam. You're in Painted Shield at Ohana Music. Uh, you know, Ohana, the second weekend was canceled this year. So we didn't play this year. Damn it. No, don't but, tell me that. I mean, I wasn't there. I'm oh, here yeah, yeah, in the no. West. You wouldn't know. You know, we were announced. So you would was there too much was- wind? Like the When We Were Young Music Festival. No, there was a there was a moment there um, right as the economy tanked where every um, festival tanked uh, as well. And uh, the no. first weekend of Ohana had sold out and it was like everyone was psyched. And um, and then this, they put the second weekend up and it, it, it didn't sell. I think Painted Shield really brought down the ticket sales. <laughs> Get out of here. See, I was eager because I you haven't performed live, right? You've got... Nope. We've uh, we played together at the studio, so there's a bunch of live videos that we've made um, from the Pearl Jam Warehouse, but um, we haven't we haven't played any shows yet, so that's coming up. I ho- I'm thinking, I'm hoping that it works out that we play South by Southwest next year, so that's in March. Ooh, it all works out. Very, very interesting how these festivals are going, how they're run, yeah. depending on the state that they're in. You know, um, it's 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 interesting. So I I'm eager to hear. Uh, new music from yeah. Painted Shield. Uh, got a third Unheard album. It's almost done right now. So, wow, yeah. well, that's awesome. I'm so yeah. I'm so thrilled for you. I'm thrilled for the future of this label with Tiger Cub. We will certainly be playing the Perfume of Decay. We just got our hands on that a couple weeks back. Yeah. So, good things to come well, um, in the Stone so Gossard circle. <clears throat> thank you so much for playing Tiger Cub and being <laughs> um, supportive because it's it's really helped. It's a it's a big deal for them and. Uh, I think in the long run, you guys are going to, you know, you guys are going to be trendsetters. So good job. They just, I think they radio just can it. still break bands. You know, it, it, we just have to do it. Now we're going to do it with Tiger Cub and Billie Jean. Hi, Billy. <laughs> As you guys are wrapping up, I just wanted to say hi and thank you, Lindsay. That was great. Um, thank you so much for covering so much of, of, of Loose Group. We're so, you have to know, we're, we're so appreciative of, of you and Derek. I mean, you guys were the first station in the country to play Tiger Cub. So we're just so thankful. So thank you. So good to talk to you, Stone. Thank you yeah. for taking the time today. Yeah, no to, problem. Uh, thank you very much. It was, it was I appreciate it, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank see you, you on Lindsay. the flip side. Okay. All right. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Stone. Thank you.